Let us begin. Tavukatham Ritam Tapta Jeevanam Kovi Viriritam Kalma Shapaham Shravana Mangalam Sri Madatatam Bhubi Grinanti E Bhuri Dajanaha We were listening to the discussion that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna was having with Prana Krishna. Prana Krishna, a very famous devotee. Those who have studied the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, they know that he was a very educated person and particularly well versed in the scriptures. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is addressing to Prana Krishna. My Divine Mother is not only formless, she has forms as well. When Sri Ramakrishna is telling this, now, this time, it seems to be so easy, it is simple, it is true, anyone can accept it. But there was a time when people will never accept. Why? Because the conception was so strong. Now even there are people who will never accept that God can have form and at the same time he may be formless. But Sri Ramakrishna from his own experience, realization with great conviction but very simply with great simplicity, he is telling, My Divine Mother is not only formless, she has forms as well. One can see her forms, one can behold her incomparable beauty through feeling and love. The Mother reveals herself to her devotees in different forms. So this is the speciality of Sri Ramakrishna. When we read the other scriptures, it is in one way it goes. And that is why Swami Vivekananda, he is telling to his very close friends that all this that we see, they are great, but only they are having only one path that they are following. But the beauty that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is having all the paths merged. So with form, without form, and the mother can take different type of forms also. Then he is telling his own experience. I saw her yesterday. He is talking with Prana Krishna today. I, it was January 1st, 1883. And he is telling, I saw her yesterday, that means 31st December. She was clad in a seamless ochre colored garment and she talked with me. Again, she came to me another day as a Muslim girl, six or seven years old. At Hridaya's house, I had a vision of Gauranga. And you know the meaning of Gauranga, that is very fair. He, the, he was very fair complexed. Gaura means fair, Anga means the body. So his name was Gauranga. He wore a black bordered cloth. Ma Kali is appearing to Sri Ramakrishna as a Gauranga, who is considered as a Vaishnava. The Vaishnavas, they considered him as their own God. And the mother Kali, who is considered as Shakta, she is appearing as a Gauranga. Haladhari used to say that God is beyond both being and non-being. I told the mother about it and asked her. Then, is the divine form 
are all illusion. He is asking the mother herself. When you read all this, as if it's so easy, just going and talking with the Divine Mother, she's always ready to answer. Some people, they will simply put it aside, oh, all rubbish. But those who really practice religion and truly they practice religion, they have developed the love for God, sincerity, purity, they can understand the depth of it. So no mechanism, not quoting any Shastras or the scriptures. I have seen, and I am telling you, the some of the people who are visiting a very a remote places, when they come back and say, they say with authority. It may not be in the bo geography book. It may not be in other scriptures and other books. The references may not be there. It doesn't matter at all. That is the beauty. And he is telling this. Then Haladhari, his own brother, he was also uh, a holy person. He used to read all this Vedanta. And he used to follow only according to the scripture of the Vedanta. That he, but there was no realization. And that is the reason. Haladhari used to say he is beyond both. Being and non-being. He is the Atman, all-pervading. And the master, Sri Ramakrishna, he went to Mother Kali and said, in that case, all the vision that I am seeing is this illusion. The Divine Mother appeared to me in the form of Roti's mother. The last time also he read this portion. And here, this is very peculiar. She is appearing in the form of Roti's mother, a lady who was not having good name. She was having rather uh, all bad names about her. And mother is taking the form of that lady. That means the mother, the divine mother can be in any form, in any place. Roti's mother and said, do thou remain in bhava. Sri Ramakrishna was just like a child. If anybody is telling anything, he is ready to accept it. And at the same, immediately, just like a child, somebody told, oh, there is this, and immediately he thinks like that. He ran to the mother and asked, is it true? Mother said, oh, no, nothing wrong. All those things are rubbish. Everything is wrong. Whatever I say, you follow that. As if just like that. The divine mother is telling her child, that you be in the bhava. This bhava is a great word. Here, Swami Nikhilanandaji, the translator, he is giving, uh, explaining this point, a rare state of divine exaltation when the devotee, after realizing the absolute, remains in the borderland between the absolute and the relative. In this state, he sees that both the absolute and the relative as the two aspects of Godhead are real. So one says the God is there as the Brahma Satya Jagan Mitha, as Shankaracharya is telling. True. But Sri Ramakrishna is telling Jagat is not Mitha. That we see over here all these names and forms, all these people and the birds and the animals and the insects, anything and everything that you see is nothing but manifestation of the same God in different names and forms. So that is why all his experience has gone beyond the Vedanta. And so many thousands of years people are arguing on, with this. But Sri Ramakrishna is telling, when you are owing a fruit, you have to take the shell of the fruit too, the cover of the fruit too, and the flesh of the fruit, of course. If you are owing the fruit, if you are taking only the flesh and giving away the skin and the cover and the shell, 
The natural is not the true weight, complete weight. The weight of that is complete. The God has become all these. It's this Srishtva in the Upanishad is say, Eda Srishtva Tadeva Anupravishat. The God has created this universe and then as a consciousness entered into it. What does it mean? That is collaborating with Sri Ramakrishna's experience. And he said, Mother told you should be in the bhava, on the threshold, standing on the threshold of the door. Outside, it is all multifarious variety. Inside, it is only one, but both are same. And afterwards, his great disciple, Swami Vivekananda, he also felt like that. And to write the introduction of his complete works, Sister Niberita, Swami Vivekananda's uh, disciple, an Irish lady, British lady, she wrote, for him, there was no secular or sacred. Do you always think the moment we are entering over here, it is sacred? And then again, if you are crossing this border, it is more sacred. When you are going and touching the God, that picture or the image, most sacred. But when you are sitting over there and talking with a person, or writing a letter, or doing something, or decorating your asama, or planting a tree or taking care of someone else, ailing person. Those are worldly things. No, that is the speciality of Swami Vivekananda. He wanted to meditate in the traditional way and to see the God in, as the Atman, as a Brahman. And he's told, he prayed to Sri Ramakrishna, what do you want, Sri Ramakrishna? asked him and he said, I like to go deep down in a samadhi like the Shukadeva and sometime only rising up from the meditation to take little food to keep this body alive and again I like to go in. Anyone would have been so happy. But Sri Ramakrishna rebuked him, fire on you. So this is the speciality of Sri Ramakrishna. This is the speciality of modern Hinduism. Sometimes some people are very eager, they say Neo-Vedantism and there is a criticism about Neo-Vedantism, the word that they are using. But Neo means in our country, they mostly they use this word Neo. Vedanta in a modern form, in a new form, in a more explained way, in a more realized way. So that's why this Sri Ramakrishna is telling the mother is coming in the form of a Muslim girl. Mother is, com is coming appearing as a Vaishnava, but not only Vaishnava, Gauranga himself. The mothering appear mother is appearing as a very, the lady who is having no good name in the society. Even in that, then he is telling like this, then he went to the mother, I repeated these to Haladhari, now and then I forget her command and suffer. He is telling that sometimes I forget that she asked me to remain in the Baba and so I suffer. Once I broke my teeth because I didn't remain in Baba. See the faith in God. Why I suffer? Because I'm not listening to God. So when we read like this, immediately we are reminded of that, the original sin that is there in the Christianity. The, the, the God asks that the first man and the woman to follow his command, to follow his words, but they denied. And the result, suffering. The Sri Ramakrishna he is telling, here he is telling, the mother asked me to continue in the bhava. Bhava means on the threshold. So constantly 
in this world and the world of the spirituality. But sometimes I forget and I suffer. The other day I broke my teeth. It is so painful because I didn't listen to my mother. And then, so I shall remain in bhava unless I receive the revelation from heaven or have a direct experience to the contrary. Look at it. The confidence, the faith. And this is realization. Swami Vivekananda was waiting, waiting and waiting. And here in America, and he was thinking to start one organization. And American people have a specialty. The moment they organize, they organize in a very perfect way. Everything they will be asking one lady, I am going to visit her home on the next Friday. She has written to me, do you want the devotees to sit on the chair or on the floor squatting? Do you like to start the class at 6.30 or you are trying to reach to my house at 6.30? Do you want them to... So this way everything is she wants to get it clear because she studied over here. And this type of organizational capacity, everything, perfect way. And in our the character, everything is when you go, we manage. In the later, always, nowadays, we, of course, we write RSVP. That means nobody knows. <laughs> RSVP means what? Nobody cares. And they will be joking, oh, something they have written, RSVP, something like that. You are supposed to respond to that person, I am coming, and coming with two. Why? Because so that they can cook. But in our country, you have to assume, and you have to cook, you have to keep everything ready, and then afterwards, if excess people are coming, you have to run to the market again to purchase, and they will criticize you. <laughs> and if they are not coming, the food is excess, you have to throw it. Then also they will criticize you. <laughs> so ultimately, why? Because psychologically we are not organized. But we are supposed to be. Why? Because we are the race of meditative people. Meditation means well organized. Very well organized. And that's I find in the Sri Ramakrishna. One of his disciples, he forgot his umbrella. He went to along with Sri Ramakrishna, then they sat under a banyan tree, and he left the umbrella over there and came away. And oh, I'm sorry, I have to go again to bring. Sri Ramakrishna immediately rebuked him. What is this? And with this type of scattered mind, you think you can realize God? Very perfect and fast. You have to do everything very fast and perfect. Why? Alert. So that are the symbols, those are the symbols of advancement in religion. After coming over here, I can understand why Vivekananda spread the message of Vedanta over here in American Europe, but not in India. He started almost from the scratch. He started over there the religion with the service. First you do the service, make the life little comfortable, and then learn to sacrifice, learn to live for others, learn to help others, concern for others. Now our great prime minister has to say, please keep things clean. And all our very, very popular cinema artists, they're also coming with a broom and just showing that they're doing, everything is now shown in the TV. So that the ordinary people also coming out one day, my hero did like this, also let me do this. One day he will do, and again he will throw that broom over there, I'm sorry. <laughs> they should not. Then who will come out to remove that broom? We do not know. Because, no, I'm just joking. Our people are very good. But only they are not organized. Why? There are many reasons that they are. Poverty and excess population. So many other things are there. So this just for the fun. 
And here we find that Sri Ramakrishna is telling that mind should be in such a way so that you, you can always have a communication with God and in that, that case you will never get any suffering. Then he is telling, so I shall remain in bhava unless I receive a revelation from heaven. Vivekananda, as I was just going to tell that, Vivekananda, all his American devotees and friends, they were telling, Swamiji, you are talking about the organization. Let us sit one day and finalize what type of organization we want, how we will do, etc., etc. But Swamiji, give me no. Then he said, I don't plan. We have to make the plan, they were telling. I don't plan. I only wait for the order of my mother. So this is a different type of leadership, different type of thinking, because for them, the receiving the command of God is so easy. And that's why the people, they misunderstood Jesus. He was so advanced at that time, the people could not understood him. They were thinking in a totally different way. So still today, the life of Jesus and his teachings should be properly read and understood and explained. And that should be done by those people who really have realized God, like Vivekananda. And that's why Vivekananda never hesitated to criticize the Christianity, the churchianity, standing over here. But when people said, you don't like Christianity, you don't like Jesus Christ, immediately he said, with a grave voice, with sincerity, had Jesus been here, I would have gone and washed his feet, not with tears, but with my heart's blood. That is the respect for Jesus. So this, again and again, we have to understand the contribution of Jesus has not been properly analyzed and explained and accepted. Then he is asking to, as if asking to Pranakrishna, because Pranakrishna was just in front, so he is there. So I shall remain in Baba unless I receive the revelation from heaven or have a direct experience to the contrary. I shall follow the path of love. And then he is asking Pranakrishna, what do you say? What Pranakrishna will say? He is not having any realization. He only reads some books. But he said, yes, sir. Immediately Sri Ramakrishna is telling, but why should I ask you about it? <laughs> because he is not actually consulting with anyone. But he is asking so many things with the people. And people are thinking that I have to guide him. But in fact, now he is disclosing. But why should I ask you about it? Then he said, there is someone within me who does all these things through me. Through me, God is working. And one can say this when one is completely free from all ego. When we say, though, no, go because of God, but at the same time, 80% of my mind is, I have done, I have done. So that ego is always there. Apparently, we are, in Bengal, they say, the Vaishnav Binoy. The Binoy means the modesty. But like the Vaishnavas, Vaishnav people are supposed to be very, very modest. But they go on acting like that, actually not. So it became a joke. So you are showing your modesty, just like those Vaishnavas. And one new train came, electric train that was introduced. And two of our people, they were saying, Sab, up pahle, you fast. Sir, you fast enter and then I will go. And the train is supposed to stand, uh, wait over there for a second or a minute maybe. And they usually going on showing the modesty. No, first you. Then he said, no, first you. Then up pahle, up pahle, up pahle, up pahle, first you, first you. Then the train started moving and the electric train means very fast. 
and they were not habituated. So one person jumped, another immediately hold his shirt and tore it out because he also wanted to enter. This is the way we do. That's called Vaishnava Bina. It's not the criticism of the Vaishnava, just to make people aware that you should be very, very sincere. Here the sincerity comes when there is no ego. And when there is no ego, God realized. And when the God realization is over, what remains? A tremendous confidence. Vishash, Vishash, Vishash. Faith, faith, faith. At times I used to remain in a mood of Godhood and would enjoy no peace of mind unless I were being worshipped. Can you imagine the way he is telling? He was remaining over there with an expectation that people will worship. And that really happened. In, he was in Calcutta. That's called Shampukur Bhati. Bhati means the house. Where he came from Dakshinesha, so that the Calcutta is a big city, so the doctors are available, doctors can easily approach him, they can check. If they have to go to Dakshinesha, it's a long way in those days. So naturally, the devotees, they brought him over here, hired a room at a house. There one day, Sri Ramakrishna asked his devotees to arrange for Kali Puja. Everything was arranged, except the image of Goddess Kali. All were arranged, everything was there. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the court and always in a meditative mood, now and then looking at the devotees and sitting over there. Everyone, including the Ramachandra Datta, he was a very old timer. He used to come to Sri Ramakrishna at this from the beginning. And people used to consult with the Ramadatta what to do with Sri Ramakrishna, how to approach this, then that. But this time also he was confused. But then came Girish Chandra Ghosh. He had a tremendous faith, faith on Sri Ramakrishna. In the beginning he was criticizing. But afterwards, when he accepted, then he accepted 101 percent. And when he came over there and said, why? You are waiting over here? You have not started the puja? They told, how can we? Master is not talking at all. There is no image of Goddess Kali. How we can worship? Who will do the worship? But the all arrangement is there. Immediately, he said, you are all fools. This is Kali, he showed Sri Ramakrishna sitting on that, that court, on his bed. Can't you see the Kali? This is Kali. And he took the flowers and offered Jai Ma, Jai Ma, glory to Divine Mother, glory to Divine Mother, to Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna went in deep Samadhi. And everyone felt the presence of the Divine Mother, Kali, there in that room. Still that room is there. Now it is a shrine. Belur Mott has purchased that and keeping. If only our, we could get some rich devotees, we could purchase all the places associated with Samiji and can keep like this. All over, so many places are there in Chicago. He went and lectured, he stayed, and so many. So it's wonderful. So the moment you go over there, you feel the presence of that Godhood. And Sri Ramakrishna is telling, who could never say, I? He was so egoless. I also he could not say, but he used to wait so the people will worship him because that particular moment he used to feel him as God and expected that God, people will worship him. At times, I used to remain in a mood of Godhood and would enjoy no peace of mind unless I were being worshipped. I am the machine and God is the operator. I act as he makes me act. I speak as he makes me speak. And then he is uh, quoting the Kamalaganta or Ramprasad. He is singing, keep your rapt says Ram Prashad, afloat on the sea of life. See the afloat on the sea of life. 
drifting up with the flood tide, drifting down with the wave. Don't do anything. Just wait, wait for the command of God. Wish of God and go like this. And that is total dedication. Total dedication. Sometimes some people, they'll be writing letters. Whatever I am doing is the command of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna told me to criticize you, abuse you, using filthy languages. And he feels that Sri Ramakrishna is asking to do that. There is a short of a psychological problem. Imagining dangerous. So imagining that God is asking to do this and asking to do that, that is very, very dangerous. But sometimes really they God, they oppose the people and their behavior is always superhuman. And that Sri Ramakrishna is telling you have to only wait and drift your boat and whatever way it is drifting, just go, depending on the mother. It is like the cast of leaf before a gill. Sometimes it is blown to a good place and sometimes into the garter. We see all the time. According to the direction of the wind, as the waver said in the story, the robbery was committed by the wheel of Rama. I was arrested by the police by the wheel of Rama. And again, by the wheel of Rama, I was set free. There's a story Sri Ramakrishna said before that judge is a one person. Hanumana once said to Rama, O oh Rama, I have taken refuge in thee. Bless me that I may have pure devotion to thy lotus feet and that I may not be caught in the spell of thy world we switching Maya. Why we suffer? Because we associate ourselves with this world. And how we associate with this world? I. I am this, I am that. We cannot go beyond that. And naturally, we suffer. But Hanumana is praying to Rama to bless so that only devotion to Rama. Sometimes some people are criticizing. That's the will, your will. You want to suffer. You want to give me all these things. You want to make me suffer. Okay, I will do that. So that way, totally depending on God. And they never suffer. Once a dying bullfrog said to Rama. These are all the stories that Sri Ramakrishna has said already, those who have read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, and in detail sometimes he is telling in the Kathamrita also. And the a frog used to constantly call on Rama, Rama for everything. And one day when the Rama kept his bow, uh, on, uh, that pushed like that, in particular that position that frog was sitting. So he, that frog was hard. After bathing in the ocean when the Rama came and took out from that and he saw the blood stain. Immediately he dug the earth and saw the frog. Then he said, yeah, for every time you are croaking, why not this time? This, then he said, whenever there is a, somebody is coming approaching and I am afraid, I call, oh Rama, save me, save me. When your bow came on me, whom to call? So I was, I was sitting quiet. So this is total surrender. If you like to kill me, okay, no problem for me. So that surrender, can you imagine? The tremendous surrender. And I used to see God directly with these very eyes. Now he is telling, I used to see God directly with these very eyes just as I see you. Now I see divine visions in trance. And he's not liking it as if. I have to go in trance, then only I can see the divine, uh, the mother. And previously I could see mother every moment, every time, everywhere. After realizing God, a man becomes like a child. 
one acquires the nature of the object one meditates upon. The nature of God is like that of a child. As a child builds up his toy house and then breaks it down, so God acts while creating, preserving, destroying the universe. Further, as a child is not under the control of any guna, guna means satta, raja, tama, so God is beyond the three gunas. There is why Paramahamsas kept five or ten children with them that they may assume their nature. The children, holy people, they always like children. Try to assume their nature, the guileless, simple. Then he's sitting on the floor and talking with. To uh, Prana Krishna, he is telling, Brahman and Shakti are inseparable. This is the speciality of Sri Ramakrishna. The, I, I, I went to um, New York. There I was supposed to talk on Shakti Puja and Tantra, Jagadhatri. So I quoted this, Brahman and Shakti are inseparable. What is Brahman? Consciousness. What is Shakti? With the help of the consciousness or that consciousness when active, working, that is called Shakti. So now we have learned something to construct, to build, maybe an engineer. Now his knowledge, as if dormant, unused, remaining in his mind only, Brahman. But when the same person is sitting with a paper, drawing and making all the arrangement, what to do, how to do, how many things necessary, that is Shakti. So that particular knowledge, in every sphere we see, one knowledge is there, and that knowledge when applied, that is called Shakti. Now Brahman and Shakti are inseparable. Unless you accept Shakti, you will find the whole universe unreal. I, you, house, buildings and family. The world stands solid because the primordial energy stands behind it. If there is no supporting pole, no framework can be made and without the framework there can be no beautiful image of Durga. So the Durga image is standing on a support and that support Sri Ramakrishna is telling that primordial energy, the Shakti, the Kali. Without giving up worldliness, a man cannot awaken his spiritual consciousness, nor can he realize God. There now is giving the practical teaching. And all this time he was encouraging us that God can be seen. You can talk to God as you are talking with your friend. But now he is telling, without give, giving up worldliness, a man cannot awaken his spiritual consciousness. What, what is worldliness? Selfishness. Not that I am leaving, I need little money, I need, I need a job, I need to talk to my friends, I need to have connections and relations with my neighbors. That is nothing wrong. But totally selfish without believing in the existence of God. Only as long as I am living in this body, I like to get as maximum benefit from the society as possible. If for that I have to cheat people, never mind. That is not good, that is worldliness. So that's why he is telling here, without giving up worldliness, a man cannot awaken his spiritual consciousness, nor can he realize God. He cannot but be a hypocrite as long as he has even a trace of worldly desire. God cannot be realized without guilelessness. And here he is 
कोटिंग ऐसी भक्ति कर घट भीतर इज इन हिंदी कापलेट ऐसी भक्ति कर घट भीतर छोड़ कपट चतुराई सेवा बंदी और अधीनता सहजे मिली रघुराई रघुराई मीन्स द रामस ब्लेसेड विशन यू कैन गेट थ्रू सेवा सर्विस वर्शिप बंदी बंदना वर्शिप एंड और अधीनता सेल्फलेसनेस दिस ईगोलेसनेस एवरीथिंग दैट आई एम डूइंग इज ओनली माइंड आई डोंट अलाउ एनीबडी टू कम एंड डू दैट और टेक दैट फ्रॉम मी दिस टाइप ऑफ एटीट्यूड That's why when the Ma Sharada Muni Devi was carrying that plate of food for Sri Ramakrishna, you know, all of you, that lady came running and said, "Mother, give me this plate. I like to offer it to Sri Ramakrishna because this is the people they think if they can give food to the holy people, so naturally they will get the blessings, etc." And when the Sri Ramakrishna told, promised to me. that you should not give this way to anyone then the mother said two sentences if anyone calls me as mother i cannot say no to that person and then he said are you my only god you are the god of the universe so who am i to stand between the devotee and the god so this is called adhinta selflessness if anybody is coming but i have to see that somebody is just a crazy doing something crazy that we have to protect but someone with a great devotion wants to come and see god and we say now nah, 8 o'clock it is closed is it we can always open a little and can ask him to hey, this is my god do you like to see this god okay there's no problem do you think god will be unhappy one person came when the mother ma sharada mani devi was taking rest she went out she came back it was a terrible summer scorching sun and naturally she was feeling very tired the moment she went into bed that person came and told now this moment i like to see mother like to offer pranam sharat maharaj was trying to persuade not now he pushed sharat maharaj aside went and mother came out gave darshan he offered his pranam after doing that he realized he made a mistake because all this time he was in an emotion he was in that charged mood that this moment i must have to go and touch the feet he was not trying to do anything harm anything wrong his devotion mother accepted that when he came down and told maharaj i am so sorry i pushed you physically uh, i should not have done like that sharad maharaj asked ma you could do the pranam to offer pranam to mother yes then he said this type of devotion is necessary so like this if somebody with a great desire has come from such a long time place and then likes to see the thakur what is wrong if we open and show him this is our thakur maybe that he is feeling that urge he is not going to touch the thakur or do anything only want to see so this type of rigidness should not be there but in belur mart as because there are so many people we have to have that rigidness that because there is no other option the chief minister of the state she came she wanted to go inside the temple and 3:30 is the time for the temple to reopen and we say that thakur has taken food and now he is resting in the noon time she was waiting over there and waited till 3:30 then went and then saw the thakur so like this we have to understand when what can be done so the chaturai this all this in they say cherish love within your heart aisi bhakti कर घट भीतर घट भीतर मीन्स विद इन द हार्ट घट मीन्स द हार्ट 
भीतर इनसाइड देन छोड़ अबंडन कपट चतुराय कपट मीन्स कनिंगनेस एंड डिसीट चतुराय थ्रू सर्विस एंड देन इसे सेवा बंदी और अधीनता थ्रू सर्विस थ्रू वर्शिप एंड सेल्फलेसनेस डज रामस ब्लेसेड बीशन काम सी दीज आर द टीचिंग्स इफ वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दीज वी मे गो ऑन प्रैक्टिसिंग रिलीजन लिस्निंग टू द होली वर्ड्स but we cannot make progress in spiritual life so this is very very important if we want to make progress in spiritual life there are so many types of doubts will be there there are so many other difficulties will be there and now if we don't understand the reality then what is the fun naturally we have to again and again take birth and death death and birth and we have to suffer and then frustration so that's why they say these are the things one must follow even those engaged in worldly activities such as office work or business should hold to the truth sri ramakrishna is telling truthfulness alone is the spiritual discipline in the kali yuga then prana krishna he is quoting from one scripture this is moha nirvana tantra a very famous book of the tantra ashmin dharme maheshi syat satyavadi jitendriya paropokar nirato nirvikar sadashaya the five qualities he is telling the five qualities in the tantra this is very important o goddess because the goddess means the parvati the shiva is telling parvati o goddess this religion enjoins it up one to be truthful self control devoted to the welfare of others unagitated and compassionate unagitated is very important the most of the time the people is to be agitated one the so naturally the young age experience is less and physical strength is too much so obviously agitation comes very quickly but we have seen the elderly people they'll be waiting listening and this is not the first time it is happening that, that man so many times he came he behaved very well this time only he, he is behaving erratically maybe that something wrong wrong has happened this patience to judge that man immediately no reaction so this is very important it says asmin dharme asmin dharme means in the tantra shiva is telling about the tantra that is called agama and when the parvati is telling that is called nigama so agama nigama these are the two great scripture of the tantra those who follow tantra they study agama and nigama this mahanirvan tantra is quoting from the agama that is the quotation from the shiva o goddess this religion enjoins it upon one to be satyavadi truthful jitendriya self control paropokara nirata devoted to the welfare of others nirvikara unagitated and sadashaya always compassionate when one can become compassionate a mother and a father they are compassionate they have given the birth of a child they gave so much of time energy money and now the child has grown up and not listening to the parents behaving in a totally different way but the parents are always compassionate why they don't want anything from that child particularly 
only to see that the child is happy. Because of this type of love for the child, this is worldly love, but when that love becomes for others, divine love. Same love, same compassion for others. That is called divine love. So that is the reason. So these are the qualities. He quoted, immediately the master is telling, yes, but these ideas must be assimilated. You have to practice these ideas. Otherwise, simply quoting from the scripture won't do. There are many of the leaders from the Hindu temples. They are asking, and many uh, temples also I go. All the time I tell them, try to assimilate what religion is teaching. Only following the rituals cannot take you anywhere. And this Saturday, I am going to deliver a, a talk in the Hindu temple, Lemont, 11.30 onwards. A few portion, just a, a few outlines of the Chandagya Upanishad, then Brihadarana Upanishad, then Brahma Shudra. The three great scripture I may not be able to complete in a day. But Chandagya, there we find these. You have to assimilate. You have to realize in your own life. Otherwise, if you are simply doing rituals without understanding it, you will go to your ancestors. And then spending some time with the ancestors, again you have to come down to this earth. That is the way the Chandaka says. But if you understand the meaning of all this, and then do the ritual, then you are going to gods. So that there are the things in the Chandagupanishad. So when we are sitting over here to meditate, or to worship God, to offer food, whom we are actually offering? To myself. You will see how the pujari is sanctifying every part of his body or her body. Every part. So that way, the change is necessary. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, but these ideas must be assimilated. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on a small couch. He was in an ecstatic mood and looked at Rakhal. Suddenly, he was filled with the tender feeling of the parental love towards his young disciple and spiritual child. Rakhal Maharaj means... Swami Brahmananda Ji, he was the spiritual child of Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna, when looked at him, Ram, Rakhal Maharaj had the habit of taking the name of God constantly, repeatedly. The moment Sri Ramakrishna used to look at him, and he saw his both the leaves are moving, immediately he could understand that he is taking the name of God. That reminded him of the God, and he used to go in ecstasy in deep meditation, in deep samadhi. So the Rakhal Maharaj was so pure. And today that uh, we see, he's called Vigyananda Ji. Because why Vigyananda? Swami Vivekananda gave that sannyasa name. He was an engineer. And he passed from the Pune Engineering College. In those days it was very famous. Even today, they are preserving the bench on which, as a student, Bigyananda Ji used to sit. I went to Pune, I went to that university. It is just as it is. And this is really wonderful. And in that room, in the classroom where he used to sit, in the end of, of course, the last portion of his study, that bench, that room, they have preserved. This Bigyananda Ji, when came to Sri Ramakrishna, first mate, he was 16 years old, young boy. In those days, it was the system, it was the habit, the custom of the Bengali families to practice the wrestling. All the young boys must practice wrestling and the physical the fitness. So he was practicing wrestling, he was a very strong body and was a very tall, powerful man, 
even at the age of 16, 17. When Sri Ramakrishna first met him in the Dakshineshwar room, he came. He was not knowing Sri Ramakrishna VZ, but he heard about him as a, as a very God intoxicated person. Out of just sheer curiosity, he came to see. The moment Sri Ramakrishna saw him, he understood that he is a spiritual dynamo. So he called him, and but he was not willing to come. Then Sri Ramakrishna knew that he is a wrestler, he practices wrestling. He started showing him his own thigh and patting his thigh. That is the symbol of challenge. The when rest, one wrestler is patting his own thigh, showing the other, that means it is a challenge, I will break your thigh. So, so naturally, you are supposed to accept that challenge and you have to fight with him. And this boy was wondering what to do. But as a wrestler, the system goes, he had to accept. He went and pushed Sri Ramakrishna and pushed him forcefully to the wall. And then Sri Ramakrishna did his miracle. He gave initiation by writing some mystical words on his lip, uh, on his tongue. So that way he was initiated. Then after, long afterwards he came and he has developed this Belurma temple. It is his creation. All the idea of Shami Vivekananda, but Shami Vivekananda along with him travel mostly the southern part of India or also the northern part. And asked him to take all the notes of the temples, different type of temples, Gopuram and Sanctum Sanctorium and the Natamandiram. So different in South India because the Muslim, particularly in the deep south of India, the Muslim aggression was not there. They preserved the old tradition of the temple construction. Shami wanted, Shamiji wanted those things at the same time mixture with the northern temples and the uh, construction. So this is a wonderful mixture of north, south, east and west. If you go, if you can understand or if you ask the, the Swamis to explain, you can find the Gujarat, then the Rajasthan, then the South Indian temples, then the Easterns, all mixed with those Western ideas also. Because the Indian way of making the temple, the Sanctum Sanctorium separated, separate from the Natamandir, the cultural hall. But here Vivekananda mixed it, just like the church. So all those things are there, the wonderful architecture. So many people, they go to study. There is a book also. And in the YouTube, you can find that. And he is the person, the architect, the Swami Bhikyananda Ji Maharaj. And he was very fond of Ganga. And he had the vision of Triveni Mata. That's why he used to live over there at Allahabad. He never wanted to come from the Allahabad. The very small ashrama, just by the side of the rail track, Whenever one, the trail will move, train will go, the whole building is shaking, tremendous sound. I, when we went, only recently, it was so difficult to sleep, I was wondering how Swamiji used to sleep. And he was all the time with Ramachandra, because he was very fond of Sri Ramachandra. He used to tell himself as the Hanumana. He used to say, I am the Hanumana. He used to put a big coat and like the child, child as Sri Ramakrishna is telling, only one weakness of Swami Bhikyananda Ji was there. So afterwards when he became the president, other Swamis when they wanted something from the president, they used to carry one pin, fountain pin. And he was very fond of pin. You will never write with that, but he will go on keeping the pen everywhere in all the pockets. He had so many pens, fountain pens and ball pens. So anyone offering a pen, he is very happy and whatever he said, he said yes. So like that, he was very fond of that pen 
and he used to go to Triveni Sangam and every day he used to see the Triveni Mata, Triveni. So that Ganga, Jamuna and Sharashati, these three rivers, leaving goddess, she is going, just showing him the road every day, used to go like that. And he had a small dispensary because Swami Vivekananda said, you have to serve the poor. So he had a small dispensary, homeopathy dispensary. But the doctor, sometimes, he used to be absent. All poor people used to come. In those days, they were so wretched. They used to come, Baba, we are, you give us medicine, give us medicine. He never knew what is <laughs> what. Is what. But all the people have come with so much faith. So he used to go to Sri Ramakrishna and to say, I don't know anything about the medicine, but please help them, cure them, because I am giving these with your name. So he, whatever medicine came in his hand, he used to give to the patient, and he, they used to get all the, uh, the med, uh, remedy. So there was a great name that he's a doctor, but he said, it is Sri Ramakrishna, Baba Roga Vaidya. He is curing all these things. I never know any medicine. So this is the tremendous faith. And the day of congregation, they say, all the great Swamis, particularly Swami Vivekananda said, his name was Peshan. He used to call him jokingly. The Prashanna Maharaj, Peshan, I will come and attain the day you will open or consecrate the temple. And then all the great Swamis, they passed away. And only in 1934, at that time, the temple was inaugurated, the big now Belurmot temple. And he kept the seat for Brahmananda Ji, Swami Vivekananda, all the Swamis who passed away before that time. And when the time came, his whole body was shaking. Others could not see, but he saw all the great swamis sitting on there, over there, on the seats offered to them, and then also participating in the inauguration of the Belurma temple. So it's the holiest of the holy. The temple is a, so one person wrote, the American lady wrote, put off your shoes for the land you are trodding on is a holy place. Thank you, dear friends, uh, uh, today after this. Uh, let us offer our pranam to Thakur. Niranjanam Nityam Anantarupam Bhakta Nukampa Dritta Vikraham Vai Isha Vataram Paramesha Midyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasanamama Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Tatsat, Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu.